All right. Well, in this lesson, uh, we're going to be um, talking about church history. Um, I'm, I'm not going to press it too far. Um, just uh, there's a lot of confusion about um, the history that Paul presents in Galatians and um, what Luke presents in Acts, um, and then you know just different conflicting ideas. Uh, and so hopefully in this lesson we will clarify that. Okay. So just to recap um, the history that we've gone over in the Old Testament and in class and at the beginning of this class, um, Moses and the law happened sometime between like 1400 to 1200, somewhere in there, okay? Um, the fall of Israel, which remember when Israel was divided into two nations, Israel and Judah, um, Israel was the, was the northern um, part, the majority of the tribes, and Judah was the southern part um, with the minority tribe. Uh, tribes, um, and so uh, Israel falls in 722, and Judah falls then in 586. Um, the first return immigration is in 538 under Cyrus the Persian. Um, Malachi prophesies about 433. That pretty much ends the Old Testament. Okay, so so we have everything there, um, being being the events of the events of. Um, all of the Old Testament pretty much summarized right there, okay? So now comes the 400 years of silence that we talked about at the beginning of the class, um, with Alexander the Great conquering in the 330s, um, the abomin abomination that makes desolate with the Maccabean Revolt and all that happens around 167, somewhere it's about. And um, what happens with that is uh, you have to kind of understand from the Jewish perspective um, you know, this is something that, that, that was prophesied to them in Daniel, and so now they're, they're anticipating uh, Jesus coming in power to set up his earthly kingdom. Um, so obviously, um, Christians, you know, um, a lot of Christians nowadays foresee a future um, abomination that makes desolate, um, just from other parts of, of Scripture and prophecy and whatnot. Uh, but anyways... Um, so then uh, they are doing their Maccabean thing uh, until we get down to the Romans becoming in power in about 63, um, where Pompey, General Pompey goes to um, resolve uh, the, the, the different conflict there, and they just kind of stay. <laughs> um, so then that takes us to the, the players take the stage. Um, Jesus is born about 6 B.C., uh, some people dated to about five, maybe four, but six is fair. We'll just say six. Um, nothing wrong with saying five, though. Um, Herod the Great dies in about four. Um, now, if you remember his, his whatever you want to say, kingdom, I guess, whatever, um, was divided between his, his three sons, and um, Archelaus was exiled Okay, in 6 AD. Now, if you remember the different the different territories lasted for different amounts of time, um, and Archelaus was exiled in 6 AD because he was um, incompetent, and uh, this makes Judah a Roman province. Province. That's why um, Pontius Pilate is in the picture because of, of of Judah becoming a Roman province. Okay, so there's still the two other sons. Who are, who are doing their thing. Um, but we talked about that in, in an earlier lesson. So Jesus is in the temple probably somewhere around 6 or 8 AD, probably 8 AD, maybe as early as 6. It's, it's a little bit difficult. Um, on, on a lot of this stuff, we have general ideas, not necessarily specific dates and times and everything. 8 is probably the better of the options, but you it could have happened in 7 or 6. Um, Jesus is carpenter, um, supposedly, between 8 and 28. Um, Paul is born at this time in Tarsus, probably around 10 AD. Um, Paul has his elementary education starting at 5. That puts it, puts it at about 15 or so. Um, let's look at some scripture here. Just to kind of give some things their context. Uh, Matthew 2, 1. So what happens is is Luke, I mean, sorry, um, yeah, Luke uh, records Jesus' birth um, and, and the things that happen immediately there. 
But Matthew kind of skips over a lot of that and picks up with the two years after with the Magi coming, okay? Um, and um, he is obviously born in Bethlehem, but then they move to, um, I think they flee to Egypt. Yeah, they flee to Egypt. And then when they come back, they settle in um, Nazareth. Okay, so at 2.1, Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem. Okay, and then in verses 19 through 23 of the same chapter, we read, um, But when Herod died, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up and take the child of his mother and go into the land of Israel. For those who sought the child's life are dead. So Joseph got up. Uh, took the child and his mother and came into the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning over Judah and Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. Then after being warned by God in a dream, he left for the regions of Galilee and came and lived in a city called Nazareth. Now remember, Galilee is ruled by the, one of the brothers, okay? And came and lived in a city called Nazareth. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophets. He shall be called a Nazarene. Um, so once again, just all, Matthew is trying to emphasize all those different um, things where Jesus uh, fulfilled prophecy, whereas Luke isn't so much concerned about that. He takes more of a more of a Greek stance on things, um, and you'll see it a lot in his uh, the vocabulary that he uses. Um, so Archelaus is writing that tells us, you know, probably around like six A.D. Um, I'm sorry. Um, who is exiled in 680. I knew that didn't sound right. Um, so, uh, then Luke 20, or 2, 41 through 52, uh, tells us the story of Jesus in the, um, in the temple. Um, that's Luke 2, 41 through 52. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he became 12, they went up there according to the custom of the feast. And as they were returning after spending the full number of days, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. But his parents were aware of it, were unaware of it, but supposed him to be in the caravan and went a day's journey. And they began looking for him among their relatives and acquaintances. Now I want to stop here. If Jesus was in the temple and ate, Obviously, he would have been born closer to um, uh, 5 BC, okay? Um, so that, that would date us at 5 there. Um, and, and honestly, the, the more realistic date is 8. Um, I just put 6 on the born area there, um, basically to cover the basis. Okay. Uh, when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem looking for him. Then after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When they saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us this way? Behold, your father and I have been anxiously looking for you. And he said to them, Why is it that you were looking for me? Did you not know that I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand the statement which he had made to them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth. And he continued in subjection to them. And his mother tre uh, treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus kept increasing wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. So. So that takes us out there. Um, Jesus is working as a carpenter and Paul's, um, Paul ha is having his education. Okay. Probably in Tarsus. So then Paul's, Paul does a tent-making apprenticeship, probably around the 22s. Um, Paul's study with Gamaliel in Jerusalem is probably around 25 AD. Okay. Um, John the Baptist ministry begins um, supposedly between either 26 or 28 is when it begins. Um, all that other people squabble about that. Um, but... Um, eventually, the Pharisees send a delegation to Jesus, and they reject his teaching. Um, this was around the times of, of uh, Philo, um, just in case for those of you who are interested about history. Philo is you know, in existence at this time. I believe he's actually writing at this point. Um, okay. Teaching, whatever you want to say. It doesn't matter. Um, Answer 29. Jesus' death. And resurrection, and a few months later, ascension, 
happens in about 30. Some say 33. Some say as late as 36 or 37. But I'm going to go ahead and stick with 30. That's more of the traditional date anyways. Um, sometimes 33 is also... Those two are kind of the, the leaders in the vote. Um, if you read, for instance... Um, uh, from Pentecost to Patmos by Blomberg, he dates the Ascension and Pentecost in the 30s, whereas um, some a lot of other scholars say around 33. So, I mean, whatever. Um, James is converted after Jesus' um, death, it appears, maybe possibly at his resurrection. Um, yeah, resurrection, between his resurrection and his ascension a few months later. Um, and it's it's not very clear when Jude is... is um, uh, converted, but maybe potentially um, James's um, con uh, conversion impacted him, or maybe he was converted before and that helped James to accept. I don't know. I don't know. It's kind of up in the air. Uh, John one nineteen. And whereas Matthew picks up two years after the key, after a lot of key events, and Luke picks up at the key events, John goes way before all that and talks about the pre-incarnate Christ. Um, John 1, 19-23 says, This is the testimony of John, when the Jews sent to him priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? And he confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Christ. So then Acts 1, 9-11 through And after he had said these things, he was lifted up while they were looking on, and a cloud received him uh, out of their sight. And as they were gazing intently into the sky while he was going, behold, two men in white clothing stood beside them. They also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the sky? This Jesus, uh, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in just the same way as you have seen him uh, go into heaven. Um, 1217. says, but motioning to them with his hand to be signed, he described to them how the Lord had led him out of, out of prison. He said, report these things to James and the brethren. I'm hopping around, aren't I? Oh, I know, I know what I'm getting at here. I'm sorry, I, I lost my place there. I was thinking, what am I reading? Um, here's uh, Paul is talking I believe it's Paul. No. No, it's Peter talking. And he says, report these things to James and the brethren. So by at least this time, uh, James is, is in with the brethren. Um, obviously, um, you know, having been, uh, having been converted, having been saved. And then 1 Corinthians 15, 7 um, uh, mentions his... his um, Appearance to James. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. So, showing that he singled James out. So, now we get kind of to the more um, organized church. doesn't take very long, um, but Acts kind of picks up um, talking about a few of these things. Stephen is stoned and Paul converted somewhere around the 32s. Um, obviously, Paul is there at... Stephen's um, at Stephen's uh, stoning. So Acts 7, uh, 54 through 83. Now when they heard the heard this, they were cut to the quick, and they began gnashing their teeth at him. But being full of the Holy Spirit, he gazed intently into heaven and saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens opened up, and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out with a loud voice, and covered their ears, and rushed at him with one impulse. When they had driven him out of the city, they began stoning him, and the witnesses laid aside their robes at the feet of a young man named Saul. They went on stoning Stephen as he called on the Lord, and said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then falling on his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this, that sin, this sin against them. Having said this, he fell asleep. And then... Um, Going through to 8.3, Saul was in hearty agreement with putting him to death. And on that day, great persecution began against the church in Jerusalem, and they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. So, now, 
the apostles are going to be in Jerusalem until closer to um, when the Jewish rebellions are, are happening, and then they're going to flee to uh, Pella, which we're going to talk about in a second. Some devout men buried Stephen and made loud lamentation over him, but Saul began ravaging the church, entering the Saul after um, entering house after house and dragging off men and women. Um, he he would put them in prison. Okay, so um, and then in nine one through nine it, it tells us. Um, Saul's conversion. You know, he's on this road to Damascus, bright light, Jesus talks to him, and he realizes, you know, wow, I'm wrong. <laughs> and um, so I, th I think he spends a few days uh, blind, and um, Ananias comes and um, talks with him. Um, and in verse 18, and immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales, and he regained his sight, and he got up and was baptized, and he took food and was strengthened. So now we see Paul's uh, conversion. So uh, Paul then goes to Jerusalem um, after a few years, um, as mentioned in Galatians 1, 18 through 2, 1, um, for the first time. Okay. Now people have gotten really confused with the with the order of events here, so let me kind of clarify this. 9, 26 through 28 mentions this. When he came to Jerusalem, he was trying to associate with the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, not believing that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took hold of him and brought him to the apostles and described to them how he had sent, um, seen the Lord on the road and that he had talked to him and how at Damascus he had spoken out boldly in the name of Jesus. Uh, and he keeps on going there. Uh, it ends up that they send him off um, to Tarsus. They sent him away to Tarsus. Um, and he eventually ends up in ministry, I believe, in Antioch. Um, I'm, not, I'm not positive. Let me look that up. Yes, he ends up in, in, in Syrian Antioch. Um, so then Galatians uh, 1, 18-2-1 gives us a little bit of insight into this. Uh, then three years later, I went up to Jerusalem to become acquainted with Cephas and stayed with him 15 days. Um, but I did not see any other of the apostles except James, the Lord's brother. Excuse me. Now, James is going to be uh, instrumental later in the Apostolic Council, which we'll talk about, um, in, 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 in giving... Uh, resolving the issue of the circumcision. Now, in what I am writing to you, I assure you before God that I am not lying. Then I went into the regions of Syria and Cilicia. I was still unknown by sight to the churches of Judea, which were in Christ. But only they kept hearing, he who once persecuted us is now preaching the faith, which he once tried to destroy. Uh, and they were glorifying God because of me. Uh, then after an interval of 14 years, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas, taking Titus along also. So this is a completely different trip, okay? So uh, let's move on here. Death of Herod Agrippa I, and Peter leaves Jerusalem. This is um, almost 10 years later in 44. Uh, Acts 12, 17 talks about... Uh, now, in, in, the, in, in the Acts narrative, there he's describing a few things, and he takes this brief intermission of what's going on with Peter, um, and Herod Agrippa is thrown in there, and then he takes us, um, takes us back with Paul, um, who's coming back uh, from uh, his trip. Uh, his second trip to Jerusalem. Yeah. Um, so, in, in 44 is when uh, Herod dies. Um, in verse 17, uh, but motioning to them with his hand to be silent, he described to them how the Lord had led him out of the prison, and he said, report these things to James and the brethren. Then he left and went to another place. Now, it's unclear as to whether Peter, Peter goes straight to Rome or whether he does a few things and ends up in Rome. Either way, we can't um, date Peter in Rome until the 60s. However, he could have potentially been there as early as the 50s or even 40s. Um, if he went straight from here to Rome, um, that would mean that somewhere along here, um, after uh, Paul's missionary trip, that Mark went up with Peter and, and wrote uh, the Gospel of Mark, um, but we'll come back to that. Um, this, so then the death of Herod Agrippa is mentioned in 23, and immediately an angel of the Lord struck him, and because he did not give, um, because he did not give God the glory, and he was eaten by worms and died. Um, and so then, somewhere around this time uh, that this is happening, James writes his epistle. Um, one of the reasons why, well, we'll get into that later. Um, 
so then um, that takes us to uh, a famine is in uh, is in Judea, okay, and Paul takes his second trip to Jerusalem from Syria and Antioch, okay. And then shortly afterwards takes his first missionary trip. Now, the height of the famine is around 46. Okay. Um, so let's pick up with Acts 11, 27 to 30. Um, this is somewhere around uh, around 44 or so, uh, the same time that Peter is leaving Jerusalem. Um, they're, they're in Antioch, there's some people prophesying, and they send um, Paul and... Um, uh, the only ways they send Paul to give relief in Acts 11, 27 through 30. Um, now, at this time, some prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch. This is what I was saying here. Um, one of them named Agabus stood up and began to indicate by the Spirit that there would certainly be a great famine all over the world. And this took place in the reign of Claudius. And in the proportion uh, that any of the disciples had means, each of them determined to send a contribution for the relief of the brethren living in Judea. And this they did, saying it, saying it in charge of Barnabas and Saul to the elders. Okay? So this is Paul's second trip to Jerusalem that he mentions in Galatians when he says 14 years later. This is that trip. Okay? Um, um, and then it just takes a brief break to talk about what's going on with Peter and why he was not in Jerusalem. Um, and then picks back up uh, afterwards in uh, chapter 13, I think, or so. No, at the end of chapter 12, verse 25, Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem. Now it picks back up with this. Um, so then um, Paul takes his first missionary trip, which is around 47. So these other things happen between um, um, around, you know, the early mid 40s or so until um, uh, around 46 or 47 okay so uh, and, and Paul takes his first missionary trip in 13:4. so being sent out by the Holy Spirit they went down to Seleucia and from there they sailed to Cyprus okay so um, it's at this point around about the Galatians is written now we know this um, if you pay attention to the uh, what what Paul writes in Galatians, he ad he addresses everything that Acts does, except he never mentions the council um, and its decision, the Apostolic Council in chapter in chapter 15 of Acts. Um, so obviously that would help us to date it before that happened, or else he would have appealed to the Apostolic Council and what decision they made, and even maybe even mentioned the fact that James um, had a key role in this. So. Um, I, he writes Galatians in about 48 or so, um, and then the Apostolic Council happens in, in um, chapter 15 of Acts. Um, uh, some men came down from Judea and began teaching their brethren, unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. And when Paul and Barnabas had great dissension and debate with them, the brethren determined that Paul and Barnabas and some others of them should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and elders concerning this issue. Okay? So, um, it's also, um, in, um, in Galatians, um, uh, Paul mentions Paul mentions having to um, uh, in chapter two he says, "But when Cephas came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face because he stood condemned. For prior to the condemn coming of certain men from James, um, he used to eat with the Gentiles. But when they came, he began to withdraw and hold himself aloof, fearing the party of the circumcision." Um, this uh, this event happened before um, before the Apostolic Council in chapter 15, and so technically, um, in 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 chapter let's see in chapter 12, when they come back 
to Antioch. Um, when they come back to Antioch, it's possible that Peter had gone there, okay, and that this was when um, Paul reprimanded Peter. Um, it seems kind of likely that that's where it happened, um, especially in light of him leaving in chapter 12. Um, so at least it's a good bet that he potentially went to Antioch before he went to Rome. Um, so I hope that that kind of clears up that issue because, you know, once again, he could have gone earlier, however. Um, it, it is a factor that is a possibility. But we can bet that he didn't go um, after the Apostolic Council, okay, in chapter 15 of Acts. So in, in chapter 15, verse 36 through 41... Verses 36 to 41. After some days, Paul said to Barnabas, Let us return and visit the brethren in every city in which we proclaim the word of the Lord and see how they are. It's at this point that Paul and Barnabas have their disagreement about whether or not Mark should go. And so Barnabas and Mark go to one place. This is in about 49 or so. And Paul and Silas uh, go to go, go the trip that Paul was uh, originally wanting. Um, so this is Paul's second missionary trip, uh, which he takes with Silas. Um, after the disagreement with Barnabas. Um, uh, so then it's about this time as well that um, Jews are, are kicked out of Rome. Um, in 18, 1 through 3, it mentions this. Excuse me. After these things, he left Athens and went to Corinth, and he found a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontius, having received, uh, recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla because Claudius had co uh, commanded all the Jews to leave Rome. Um, and then in verse 12, um, but while Galileo was proconsul of Achaia, the Jews with one accord rose up against Paul and brought him before the judgment seat. Okay, now let's kind of slow down for a second. Um, so the Jews are kicked out of Rome. Paul is on his second missionary trip and runs into some Jews uh, who had been kicked out of Rome. Okay, now um, when he comes to Corinth, there's someone there named Galileo, which I just read about. Um, and he was in, in, in Corinth from about 51 to 52, so we can date that to around there. Um, shortly after this, um, or actually I should say before this, sometime while Paul is on his second missionary trip, okay, he, he has this Thessalonian correspondence. Um, both letters were written relatively close together, in the 50s to 52 somewhere. Um, so... After this, Paul takes his third missionary trip and spends about three years in Ephesus. Um, he leaves for, for his third missionary trip in 52. Um, so then 1823 through 28. Um, and having spent some time there, he left and passed successively through the Galatian regions and Phrygia, strengthening all the disciples. Um, and then um, it, it mentions there about Apollos and how Aquila and Priscilla helped um um, helped him to learn great uh, more fully, and then they, the brethren sent him to um, Achaia. Um, you can read that for yourself. I have the references right there. You just keep reading 18, 24 through 28. Um, so Peter may be in Rome now at this point in 54, um, and, it, and the, which is when the Jews are allowed to return, uh, which Priscilla and Aquila end up back in. Um, Rome, one way or another, um, and so that takes us through takes us through that. Um, so as you can see, a lot of things are starting to happen in the 40s and in, in, in early 50s, which takes us to um, the Gospel of Mark being written potentially around 55 or so. I mean, Mark's dating is a little bit um, hard to, to come by, um, but. Probably somewhere around the 55s, and if you look, and if if Paul, Peter was in Rome by 54, um, and obviously Barnabas and Mark would have finished up their trip, and Mark would have somehow ended up in in Rome with Peter and wrote uh, Peter's um, memoirs, which became the Gospel of Mark, um, sometime in the 50s. Um, so then, uh, at the same time, Paul is having his correspondence with the Corinthians um, in a few different visits. Um, he, he goes to them, and then when he's staying at Ephesus, he potentially um, quickly goes to Corinth, uh, which we'll talk about this uh, when we reach um, the epistles to Corinthians later, um, and, and has a series of, of conversations with them. This is around 55, 56 somewhere, okay? Now, 
after this, Paul ends up uh, arrested um, in chapter or chapter 21, and this is around 57, uh, and Romans was written around 57. Um, um, so that takes us to Acts 21, um, 31 through 36. Obviously, Paul has it in his um, in his in his heart to go to Rome. While they were seeking to kill him, a Roman cohort that all Jerusalem was in. I'm sorry, I skipped a few lines. While they were seeking to kill him, a report came up to the commander of the Roman cohort that all Jerusalem was in confusion. At once he took along some soldiers and centurions and ran down to them. And when they saw the commander and the soldiers, they stopped beating Paul. Then the commander came up and took hold of him and ordered him to be bound with two chains. And he began asking who he was and what he had done. But among the crowd... Uh, some were shouting one thing and some another, and when he could not find out the facts because of the uproar, he ordered him to be brought into the barracks. When he got to the stairs, he was carried by the soldiers because of the violence of the mob. For the multitude of the people kept following them, shouting away with him. Um, so this is when Paul is arrested. Somewhere in here he writes Romans. Um, and then Paul uh, ends up in Rome uh, by the 60s or 62, which means that Festus um, succeeds... Uh, uh, Felix in about 59 or so. Okay, so Paul ends up in Rome in in chapter 28, uh, 30 through 31, and he stayed two full years in his own rented quarters and was welcomed and wel was welcoming all who came to him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching concerning the Lord Jesus Christ with all openness unhindered. So you see, it kind of ends on a very positive note for Paul. Um, and things change drastically between now and, and the events of Second Timothy, where he's, you know, I'm being poured out like a drink offering. Um, so then Jude and, and Hebrews are written sometime in the 60s. Um, Jude probably was written before Second Peter. Um, we'll get to that later. But uh, Hebrews was probably written before the fall of Jerusalem. Um, but, uh, you know, just we'll get to that when we get to Hebrews, but probably in the 60s somewhere. Um, Luke writes the the gospel of luke and acts for theophilus um in in the 60, in early 60s um and probably finishes them by 64 or latest um somewhere in there um and you can tell that uh once again paul's in rome until 62 and acts ends with paul being in rome and it mentions two years there why would he have not mentioned uh, anything else that happened with paul probably because it didn't happen yet which gives strong support for acts being finished by 62. Um, some people would go as late as 64 so i went ahead and wrote it down but i would strongly say that it probably was written by 62. Um, so it's in this imprisonment that paul writes uh, philemon colossians and ephesians um, in about 61, writes them uh, probably back to back um, with Colossians, probably being written before Ephesians. Um, we'll get to that some other time, though. Um, James is killed. Now, this is not James the disciple James, okay? The disciple James was killed way back when Peter was arrested, okay? Um, but this James is John, uh, uh, Jesus' brother James, and he's killed around 62. Um, Philippians is written then a little bit after those other books in 62. Paul is released allegedly and goes to Spain is is what I believe tradition dates it at and that's around 62 or not dates it at but claims happened um, and that's around 62. Uh, it's here that he writes Titus and 1 Timothy. Um, I'm sorry, I said Colossians was written, or probably written before Ephesians. I meant Titus was probably written before 1 Timothy. I, I'm sorry. Um, and he probably writes them around 63 or so. Uh, Peter is, in, is still in Rome, and uh, Mark is with him at this point, and he writes 1 Peter. Okay, this is around 64. Um, 1 Peter 5.13, um, it says... Uh, She uh, who is in Babylon, chosen together with you, sends you greetings, and so does my son Mark. Um, once again, the idea of Rome being Babylon, um, just the immorality there. Um, and, and Mark is at this point with Peter. Um, now, Catholic tradition uh, claims that, that Peter actually started the church in Rome. Um, we can't really know for sure one way or another, but that's what tradition says.
Um, so it, this is in 64. Emperor Nero starts his persecution um, about 64. There's a, there's a fire that happens in Rome, and he blames the Christians. And so this starts um, this starts him persecuting Christians in about 64. This goes to about 68 when he you know commits suicide. Um, Matthew is written probably somewhere around here, around 65 or so, um, by actually one of the disciples, or apostles, I mean. Um, one of the two that were actually written by an apostle. Um, so then, this is in 65 about, so that's things, things are even kind of tense. Peter Paul's off in, 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 in Spain somewhere. Um, anyways, by 67, we have St. Peter and St. Timothy written. We have Mark now comes and visits Paul right before he's killed, uh, and so does Timothy. Uh, Paul and Peter are both killed um, in the in the persecution. John, um, the the apostle, goes to Ephesus uh, with Jesus's mother, um, is I believe how the tradition goes. Um, the church flees to Pella. Um, things in Jerusalem are just getting a little bit too intense. Um, Qumran. Uh, the, the community that, that is responsible for the Dead Sea Scrolls is destroyed. Um, the, all this is happening place. Big shifting happening. Okay, As you can see, the title is, and this slide there is named Toward a New Era. Everything just starts changing for, for, for the church, for the uh, Roman area of, of Palestine. It's just completely, completely changing. Um, and uh, so at Qumran, they, they, they hide these Dead Sea Scrolls, and, and then it's destroyed. Um, saying in Timothy 4.11, all this different stuff is happening at the same time. Um, and you can see uh, the change in, in just how Paul, Paul writes, saying in Timothy from 1 Timothy. Um, 4.11 says, um, only Luke is with me. Uh, pick up Mark and bring him with you, for he is useful for me in service. So by his death in 67, around about somewhere, um, Luke is with him. You know, obviously, Luke, uh, Paul could have died earlier. He might not have even gone to Spain. Um, but so if he did go to Spain, there's a good chance that Luke maybe went with him or stayed in Rome or something. Um, and, and then when he came back, that Luke, you know, um, was with him there. Um, and, and then so he asked Mark, um, and he asked Timothy to come see him before he's um, obviously killed. In 16 it says, At my first offense, no one supported me, but all deserted me. May not be counted against them. Basically, things have drastically changed from the ending of Acts, which was so optimistic, towards the ending of 2 Timothy, which is basically, you know, I had a hearing, and it was not good. <laughs> Obviously, things have drastically changed. Um, Jerusalem is then destroyed in about uh, August, I believe, of, of 70. Um, and and so, uh, this is pretty much the Sadducees all die off now. They were pretty de dependent on that temple. Um, the Pharisees, um, not maybe not all of them, but at least you know a chunk of Pharisees um, get permission and and then start a, uh, go to uh, Yamnia, which they start a school at. Um, John then is written um, afterwards in probably about eighty nine or so. Uh, eighty nine is just a good average of when it could have been written. Joseph is, is writing it at, at, at this time. Um, for those, Once again, those of you interested in history, um, I think one of his earlier writings is in the 70s, one of his later ones is in the 90s, but Josephus, uh, how, whatever it dates to, Josephus is, is, is alive at, at this time doing his thing. Uh, first thing and third John are written probably in the 90s, early 90s somewhere. Revelations in, um, is probably written in 96. Um, so all this different stuff happening. You just see the drastic change of things. The church is, is, is changing. It's very plain why um, in Revelations why it takes such a such, such a strong tone to encourage people um, with all the different um, um, things that are the, um, doctrinal things that are happening. Remember, um, Gnosticism. It's unsure when it got started. Maybe before the church. Maybe after the church. Maybe with the church. It really doesn't matter. Um, it got going somewhere. Around there, um, and by this time, um, it, it seems to at least be gaining some steam. Um, now, remember, Gnosticism is, is is very much so often confused with uh, Greek culture. Okay, there does need to be a distinction made between them, so it's a little bit unclear as to when the actual Gnosticism got going. Um, but with that being said, uh, by this time, 
um, there were there were very strong uh, doctrinal problems happening. Um, Jews trying to make people Jewish, Christians trying to make people uh, I mean sorry Greeks trying to make people uh, uh, pagan. You know all these different things are happening, and there's just such tension. Uh, Jerusalem is no longer the, the the religious base anymore. It's now a Pella. There's just such change happening. Okay. Um, the great uh, warriors of the faith are dying off. Jesus' own brother James is is, is dead. Paul dead. Peter dead. You've got all these all these um, people dying. A good majority of the apostles, if, if not all of them, are dead by this point. Um, and John who would be the last uh, then remaining apostle. Is 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 alive and and well, he was in Ephesus, but then he was um, uh, sent to Patmos, um, an island. Um, not really important, but you know. Um, so that takes us to to the new era, all the, all the changing things, and I'm gonna very briefly go over this because not really um, important. I'm just kind of saying it to give kind of um, um, an overview, okay, of the last two thousand years. Um, so the church fathers, those those people who are, who um, you know wrote all those volumes um, that the. Um, Christians are, are always talking about, they're about the 100s to the 300s in that area. Um, and what's called the Great Persecution uh, happens in, in mostly in the early 300s. Um, and this was actually, Christians thought that it was what Revelations was talking about. It could have been in part, who knows. Um, with the Edict of Milan, um, the, the church is now imperialized in 313 in the sense that now it is no longer um, illegal. Or, I don't know how say this um it's now okay to be christian i don't know how, how to say that but anyways um this is with constantine uh at 313 so then in 325 we had the first big church uh deal going on the council of nicaea um kind of a kind of a big deal um the vulgate is written in the late 300s by jerome who dies in the early 400s um Rome falls in 410. The Crusades are in the thousands, uh, roundabouts, and the Reformation's the Reformation then is in about 1500s with uh, Martin Luther and John Calvin and all them. Okay, Zwingli. Um, so, um, just a few last finishing things here. First off, most early Christian persecution was from Jews and not from Romans. Okay, um, it was a while before Romans and Jews. The Romans cared enough to persecute. Um, and, and, and so, anyways, the, so the, for the first good part of, of, of Christianity, it was the Jew, Jews who were persecuting. Obviously, the fall of Jerusalem, um, there was a political, or not political, yeah, I guess you could say political shifting going on. Um, so, so that changed things a lot. But um, and the emperors who caused the persecution weren't bad emperors; they were actually good emperors, and they and the, the reasons were because emperor worship was expected, and Christians were very much so not into that. So civilized people thought that Christians were uncivilized. They thought that they were, you know, troublemakers, that they were going to rebel, that they were going to cause problems with the empire. Um, obviously, people then, just like now, wanted security. Um, and, and so uh, the emperors would persecute Christians um, to, um, to bring security, to bring peace to the empire. Um, so uh, it's kind of a misconception that only bad emperors persecuted people. They were actually good emperors. They just, you know, persecuted Christians. Um, there was also, um, as you know, early, late century, late first century, early second century, about right about um, rumors that that during their love, the Christians love feasts, they were having orgies, that um, there were initiation rites of of putting children in bread that that had to be. Um, you know, eaten and devoured and whatnot, um, and then there were a lot of attacks from philosophers and stuff like that. So this prompted a lot of the early church fathers' writings. Um, yeah, um, but also it's important to note that the, the early church's Bible was the Old Testament. Okay, this is where the New Testament drew its inspiration, or not drew its inspiration. The inspiration was from the Holy Spirit, but I mean, a lot of times they'll do the work for you, and that they'll take an Old Testament passage. And apply it for us. So when we read the New Testament, a lot of times we're just reading um, things that, that were said in the Old Testament one way or another. Um, but this obviously isn't about that. Just wanted to kind of bring something there. Um, but anyway.
anyways, these different letters and epistles and whatnot, um, they, they, they get they get going spreading uh, pretty widely. And um, by the time that they're um, that they decide on the canon, these books are already widely circulated. Um, and so, okay, um, I hope that that kind of gives um, a good summation of the history, uh, what's going on there. Um, I hope that I didn't make it confusing. Once again, if you have any questions, um, always post them in the, in the boxes below, and I'll try to answer them the best I can. Um, if I didn't make something clear, I, I'll even go to the extent of posting a new video, um, excuse me, to clarify things. Next video is going to be about James, Galatians, Jude, First and Second Thessalonians.